Guys, welcome back. This is amazing. I'm so excited. Everything is incredible. Life is so good. The channel is up over 300 subscribers and we're gonna make the goal of a thousand subs by the end of the month. So by March 1st, we will have over a thousand people strong on the Working Class Musician YouTube channel. I'm going to keep pumping out videos as much as possible. Thank you guys so much. Let's keep it ripping. Everything's been on the up and up. My Instagram, the YouTube channel, TikTok. I think at the time of this video going up, I might be up to a million followers on TikTok. But this video is not for me to be talking about social media platforms. This video is for me to voice an unpopular opinion that I have. And my unpopular opinion is that Chuck Berry should have played a flying V. Oh my God, the flying V. The flying V. One of the most iconic guitars to ever exist. Ever, hands down. You could see it from a mile away. Painters, tattooers, any sort of visual art. People who make uh, animation. I've heard them say that you have to be able to recognize it from far away. That's a really, really cool concept to me because some of my favorite artists, whether it be music, videos, uh, you can tell their product from very far away. You could just take a glance at it in the distance and you know exactly what it is. The Flying V is that in its simplest form. It is the most recognizable, the most iconic guitar to ever come out. It has been copied for generations. <laughs> It's one of my favorite heartwarming stories about the little guitar that could. When it was released, it was almost immediately taken off the market because people, people's heads exploded at the time. The Flying V was too futuristic. The Gibson Flying V was released in 1958 alongside of its brother, the Explorer. These guitars were groundbreaking for the time period. 1958, 1950s America. We look in the textbooks and we think, what a conservative time period. And for that guitar to come out, it was probably offensive. It was probably an offensive concept. <laughs> could have very well sparked the movement that was the 60s. You know, Jimi Hendrix played flying Vs. People always recognize Hendrix for the Strat, but they forget that the V was one of his most iconic guitars. Dominant seven chords, that tells you a lot about a guitar. So the V and the Explorer were made from 1958 until 59, and then discontinued, never to be seen again, until I believe 1962 for a short term, and I think they were only released for a year, and then after that, not seen again until the 80s. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. You know, if I'm wrong, put it in the comments below, because I think that's right off the top of my head.
Think about all the guys who are famous for playing Flying Vs. Think about it, you got Lonnie Mack, you've got Albert King, Jimi Hendrix should be on that list. You've got Rudolf Shanker, you've got Michael Shanker, you've got anything that's ever been involved in the Metallica Megadeth world. You know, nowadays, you've got one of the sickest players being Joe Bonamassa. The V would go on to inspire guys like Kerry King and guys like Randy Rhodes. These are all Vs that would have never existed without the initial Gibson Flying V. The V is taken on such a persona that it's used as your kind of iconic guitar, rock star guitar in TV shows and in cartoons. It's always a V-shaped guitar. All of this being said, I think Chuck Berry should have played one. The reason I say this is I was playing in a Christmas band. We would play Run Run Rudolph. And when I would plug my flying V into the front end of that fender and kick the grid on, it was one of the most gorgeous sounds I've ever heard. still view this guitar as a metal guitar. And it couldn't be further from the truth about it. It's just a very well-rounded, odd choice of words for a V. It's just a very well-rounded guitar. It's got so many things that it can do. And this is me talking about mine. Even on my cleanest setting, it's not clean. <laughs> Look at this thing. Oh, every time that I pull a guitar up on camera, I just love looking at it. I can't stop looking at the screen. Oh, let me get that right. There we go. It's such an incredible, incredible guitar. It's so iconic, that huge pick guard, the huge white pick guard, the three knobs, like just everything about it. And you get it in red with white. This is the, this is the, uh, let's see if you can see it. It's an unfinished body and it just feels wonderful. The neck. <laughs> This was my start into playing guitars with unfinished necks. Got the Cluson locking tuners on it, which are totally revolutionary. So this is the most space age flying V you're ever gonna see. Medium jumbo frets on this one, which I like. I'm thinking about putting jumbos, I don't know, but we'll see. Stop bar, all your basic stuff that comes on a Gibson at that point. <laughs> It's got the 490s in it. They're pretty hot, but they're like, they're bitey in such a good way. They're thick, but bitey at the same time. I like the, the way these pickups blend very, very well. And they're the, the system they use for blending them. It makes the middle position on the Flying V so much more useful and so much more clear and uh, it's so gorgeous. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
there's other guitars that I play. Obviously, I'm a huge fan of my Ibanez AZs. I play those for everything. I don't think I use any other guitars. My All my guitars, I have two AZs that I use and the Flying V. That's it. This guitar is perfect. Actually, wanna know how much I love Flying Vs? That's how much I love Flying Vs. I have them tattooed on my arm. I think that says something. I think the depiction of Flying Vs is so important. And I have no problem being SpongeBob. I want to be flashy as hell on stage. I like flash. I like when guitars, when you can identify a guitar with a player. I love it. You know, Angus and his SGs, stuff like that. There's a great video of Lonnie and Stevie Ray Vaughan ripping, and Lonnie is just killing it on a V. They sound so good. Nothing else sounds like a flying V. The interesting thing is that the Explorer doesn't even sound like the flying V. It's just perfect. It doesn't need anything else. It doesn't need crazy inlays. I don't need lumen lays on the neck. I don't need anything. I don't even need a finish on this thing, man. It just needs to be a big old flying V. Ah, oh, it's so good. It I did an amazing recording session that involved this guitar and we needed some serious sustain. I hit this one note, man, and it just sucked. And I try, I try and play this guitar as much as humanly possible because I think it is, I think Flying Vs are very underrated for how useful they can be. Oh, that feels so good. How long have I been playing for? Whoa, way too long. <laughs> These are the guitars that change the world. Gibsons like this. I hate to admit it, but they give you a feeling. You can't beat the feeling 
that you can get from something like a Gibson Flying V. It just, it feels so heartwarming. The, the tones are just massive and it just feels right. You feel like you're playing a piece of history in a way. Thank you so much for all the subscribers. Everything is flying. We're up 300 subscribers in the past 20 something days. TikTok, Instagram, everything is going nuts. And for anyone out there that is either a Flying V player or agrees that Chuck Berry playing a Flying V would be badass, comment down below. I wanna hear from you. I wanna to talk to you. Thank you guys so much as always. This is the Working Class Musician. I'm Jimmy Franklin and I'm out. Oh, I love this guitar so much.